This question here has a child riding a roller coaster, and it goes through a loop that goes up and down in the air. So if you've ridden roller coasters before, you might have experienced something like this, where it's quite fun,、um, where you go upside down for a minute without falling out of the car. And these type of problem is what we call a vertical loop, because what you end up doing is you end up traveling basically in a circle. But the circle is not flat on the ground like most of the questions we've been doing, but it's flipped up vertical. So due to gravity, as you go up, you're gonna start out fast on the bottom and then slow down near the top, right? Just because gravity tries to pull you down. So the entire motion is not at all that straightforward. But if we look at any particular point, as long as we use radial and tangential component, it becomes fairly easy. To、uh, resolve, so the basic assumption is that you are still going in a circle, and the only thing we're talking about moving here is the child. That when they talk about seven meters, we're talking about this is the seven meters here of the circular path that your child goes through. And these vertical loops here, you are in circular motion, but because of how gravity slows you down as you climb up. Your speed changes, so this is calling back to the case of non-uniform circular motion. If you recall, with non-uniform circular motion, the kinematics of it gets easier if you use radial and tangential coordinate system. So we're kind of applying that same tool to forces, and that's why these kind of problem gets highlighted. So let's go through these one part at a time. In part A. They're specifically talking about the point at the very top, which is point A. Like how we do all forces problem, the first thing you want to do is to look at all the forces on the body using a free body diagram, like always. So if you look at the top of the arc like that, there's going to be the roller coaster, which is kind of like a chair mostly, and there's your person upside down, of course. So that's the path it's going through. Um, let velocity should be going to, in this case, the left. So let's look at the forces on this body. We go through the chain checklist as we always.、Uh, the only thing the child is touching is the chair, which gives you a contact force. Let's call it a normal force. There might be a friction component, but、uh, you see that it doesn't really apply、uh, in this part here. And then, of course, you're a nurse, so you have mg pointing straight down. Then here's the bit with the non-uniform circular motion. We're going to use a radial and tangential coordinate system, and as always,、uh, the radial direction is positive inwards, and the tangential is in the same direction as the velocity. So in this case, forward, meaning to the left. If broken down in this way, you recall that the acceleration overall can be broken down into a radial. And tangential component, where the radial component is going to be your centripetal acceleration v square over r, whatever the v is, whatever the r is at that point. There's some tangential acceleration which might change your speed, and given this acceleration, right, we can relate that to the net force, right, because the sum of forces is always equal to the mass times the overall acceleration. So between these two kind of quote unquote equation, we can then go ahead and try and solve for the force that we are missing. So the sum of forces, right? Our job first of all is to break down all the forces into the unit vectors that we're dealing with. So in this case, the radial and, the, and the tangential. In this case, both the forces are pointing straight downwards because gravity always pulls down. And because the chair is kind of flat, when it's right on top like that, the chair is horizontal, and so normal and away from the chair would also be downwards. And in the case where we're dealing with the very point at the very top, downwards are in towards the center of the circle, so they are both positive radial、uh, forces. So you got mg positive in the r hat direction plus fn in the r hat. Direction also positive. Sum of forces equals m a, so we can write that as such, and we have the a from b 
before as it was broken down. Then we can deal with this component by component. Now you might wonder, looking at this free-body diagram, both forces point down, so why won't you just fall straight down? Well, remember, the sum of forces only gives you m times a. And so what it is telling you is that you are indeed accelerating downwards, but because you're already moving quite fast in the horizontal direction, this downwards acceleration is basically your centripetal acceleration. You're very correct. You are accelerating downwards. What that does is it's actually keeping you in the circle. So in a sense, the, the chair is scooping you back for you to follow this circle. Now breaking this down by component, you can see that in the tangential component, the tangential acceleration will be zero in the absence of any friction. But that doesn't matter because what we're interested in is the normal force. So we look at the radial component, and so that's mg plus fn is equal to m times v squared over r. We want to solve for fn. We get that, subbing in the numbers, 10 meters per second for the speed at the very top, and 7 meters as the radius, as always. Then you square and you divide. You do, in fact, get meters per second square. Multiply by kilograms gets you newtons. And same thing for the second term. Plugging into the calculator gives you roughly 180 newtons. And there's our answer, right? Nice and pretty. Now moving on to part B. Part B asks us the force of the car seat on the child at point B. So not at the very top, but over here now. Still more or less upside down, but not directly overhead. And when they ask the force of the car seat, we're again assuming that they are just talking about the normal force and not the frictional force. But in any case, again, free body diagram, right? So the normal force is always pushing on the child perpendicular to my seat and away from the seat. So in this case, a little angle like that. You might have some friction force, depending, but it doesn't affect our answer because it's perpendicular to our normal force. And then your mg always points down. Right, center of the body, mg like that. Again, because this is non-uniform circular motion, we're gonna use a radial and tangential corner system, which then means in this case, we actually wanna break down all the forces along those axes. So the only force that we have to kind of break down is actually the gravity force, with this being 30 degrees. Because your normal force is 100% in the radial direction, and your frictional force is 100% in the tangential direction. When we write our sum of forces kind of statement, we can write pause of our hat towards the center of the circle. In this case, my FT is probably negative the way I drew it. Then along the radial direction, that's cosine 30 degrees, and then sine 30 degrees for the tangential direction. And again, the sum of forces gives you m times a, which once again gives you the centripetal acceleration in the radial direction plus some tangential acceleration in the tangential direction. You would imagine this um, tangential acceleration would be positive because your speed should be increasing as you come down. Again, you can see due to the tangential component of gravity there, but mostly we're focused on finding fn, so we basically just look at the radial component. So you look at the radial component, you just have Fn plus mg cosine 30 degrees gives you m times v squared over r. Rearranging to solve for Fn, we plug in the numbers. In this case, we're a little past the top, so we sped up a little bit. They give us that speed, 10.5. And don't forget the cosine 30 term. So calculate the work later, roughly 290 newtons. So if you look at the two terms, as you get past the top and that angle increases, your radial component of your gravity goes down because you're more and more an angle, right? Less and less of it goes radial. And because you're speeding up, 
your centripetal acceleration term goes up. So you can see that as you go past the very top, your normal force increases as you go around. What this telling you that flip it around the other way, what you have is that you have a minimum chair force at the very top. So if you remember these rides, as you go around and go up to the top, it's possible that you can feel sort of weightless for a second, which brings us to part C. So part C here, it calls back to point A, where your normal force, as we now know, is the minimum. But that implies then, therefore, there is a minimum speed. We'll see how that works. So if you recall, at point A at the top, if we bring back the free body diagram again from before, and if we look back at part A, you know that the normal force that we solved for, based on the free body diagram, is given by this lovely equation here. And since we're told that the child is not holding on or does not wear a seatbelt, the only way the chair can interact with the child is push away from it, therefore downwards. Since Fn must point downwards, it cannot be negative. Right? Negative would imply that it would be opposite to the downward or positive radial direction as drawn. So therefore this implies that the first term can never be smaller than mg. So you must maintain a certain amount of speed. And that minimum would be when the numbers any less than that becomes negative. So that's when fn would be equal to zero. If you tune it just right, you will feel exactly weightless at the very top if you move at the minimum speed. Most roller coasters don't really go quite to that level because, you know, safety factors. If you go, you know, if there's any friction in the system, you go any slower. Instead of keep going in a circle, you would have your gravity so big that it will turn you in a tighter circle than the track. So then you end up falling off the track, and which is no good, right? So most roller coaster gets close to the speed, but not as low as that speed. So you won't feel exactly weightless, but you you might feel lighter depending on how they design the roller coaster. You feel a little lighter, and then you get heavier again as you swing back down. So now that we know what the algebra is telling us, we want to find fn to be equal to zero. So this minimum speed we can solve for by rearranging and subbing in with all the units. You can double check that now that you have meters per second squared times meters, that's meters squared per second square, square root, gives you in fact meters per second, which is a unit for speed as we expect. And that rounds out to roughly 8.3 meters per second. Just putting the sentence to actually answer the question. So, uh, vertical loop. It's a hopefully somewhat fun application of non-uniform circular motion. You know, recalling back a couple weeks ago when we dealt with these radial and tangential um, parts of the acceleration. But we're extending that same uh, radial and tangential kind of coordinate system to dealing with forces as well. Because there's no reason not to, right? You still have sum of forces equals ma, and so you can still break down your forces in any coordinate system we wish, and in the case of these non-uniform circular motion, it makes the most sense to do it radial and tangentially.